Holy Thursday, the first movement here in the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Tomorrow night, the movement continues. We'll regather here in the sanctuary at 7.30 for Good Friday Tenebrae worship. And then it continues. Saturday night, we'll be gathering off-site at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Menor at 7 o'clock. I hope, I hope you can join us for that. Uh, and then, of course, finally Sunday morning, we'll be here in the sanctuary again, 10 a.m., for festival worship. I have just one thing to draw your attention to in tonight's service. Uh, if you would turn to page 4 in the gathering hymn, There's a special rubric here at the, at the beginning of, of the hymn. If you remember, Ash Wednesday began Lent with a long extended time of confession, confession of sins. Tonight you get the chance to hear individually that your sins are forgiven. So if you would like that word of forgiveness just for you, I'll of course proclaim it for everyone in the confession and forgiveness, the corporate confession and forgiveness. But if you want that extra word of forgiveness, come up during the gathering hymn. I'll be here at the front of the chancel, and I'll offer you a word of personal forgiveness. And now as God gathers us on this holy night, we prepare for worship with the prelude. Please rise. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter into the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus the Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
all things new. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life, 
Thanks be to God. We will now sing Psalm 116 with the congregation taking the part in the bold print. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will live with hopes of salvation and call the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and the fruit of your lips. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Our second reading is from Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. It's time for our children's moment. Would anyone like to join me here tonight? Hey, Cherish. <laughs> Cherish. Gordon, all right, we've got two. This is good. Good, good. Um, tell me about feet. They stink. They stink. Oh, boy, do they stink. Yeah, what do we do with our feet? Well, we walk with them. What else do we do with our feet? Yeah, we grab stuff. What if we were like kicking around a soccer ball, right? Yeah, yeah, we do some things with our feet. Um, how do we take care of our feet? We wash them. Pedicures, maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. That, that's the good stuff. Um, did you know that Jesus washed his disciples' feet? Have you heard this story? What do you know about that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They sat down, poured water, washed the feet. Um, do you know what they were doing when they were uh, getting their feet washed? The other thing they were doing? They were, yeah, they were eating together. Yeah, yeah, they were eating together. Um, I think it's kind of wild that 
that Jesus washes their feet. Because who, who's washed your feet other than you? <laughs> yeah, maybe someone in your family. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Maybe, maybe our, uh, the pedicurist. Uh, yeah. Okay, not you. Not you. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, not many people wash our feet, right? Because it's kind of a, a thing. It's kind of a thing. But I thought, check this section out. I have a bowl here from Grace Lutheran Church, Cleveland Heights, of blessed memory. And so I've got a bowl here, and I've got a towel. Would you hold the towel? And I happen to also have a little bit of water. Now, I thought maybe it would be a bit weird to wash each other's feet, but what if we washed some hands here? Would you be up for that? That sounded a little better. (laughs) Yeah, all right. All right. Here, you can set them here. Yeah, here. Grab a little water here. Here, I'll pour a little over over your hands first, Cherish. All right, you can just kind of wash them a little, rub them together maybe. Yeah, yeah. Dry your hands. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Now I'm going to hand this to you. Now, Gordon, if you would dip your hands in the water and cherish, if you just rinse them a little. Yeah, give them a little extra water. Perfect. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. You rub them together. Great. Okay. Well, Gordon, would you be up for pouring some water over my hands here? There's, I think, just a little bit left. Yeah, it's not too bad. Thanks. Did you pour a little over my hands? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Cherish. Thank you, Gordon. It's kind of a special thing to uh, do something like this together. Yeah. I bet Jesus and his friends... uh, had a special moment together, too. Maybe a little more awkward than the hands. Yeah. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you that you wash us in all sorts of ways. We thank you that you uh, that you care for us and that you care for your disciples and their their minds and their bodies and their spirits. All of us. Uh, Be with us tonight as we remember your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Please rise for the gospel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anchor, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, 
Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. So Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now, the Son of Humanity, the human one, has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Judeans, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Is it just as simple as that? Dear church, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Is it just as simple as that? All you need is love, right? As one songwriter put it a couple years ago. I mean, when it comes down to it, everything that we endeavor to do together as a faith community, everything we do together is rooted in love. Christ's love. When a young one is born and we bring them to baptism and sing to them about how they belong to Christ, that's that's all about love. And when youngsters then become curious about the bread and the and the wine and want to be part of the meal, and so we scooch around and make room at the table so that we can feast together, that's about love. And when we sing and play and bow and pause and pray, all of it is about love. But sometimes it's hard to be loved. And sometimes it's hard to love. There's a measure of vulnerability that comes with love. I find it absolutely wild that the enduring story of this night, Maundy Thursday, is the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet, of all things. I mean, there's so much vulnerability, as we, as we just talked about. There's so much vulnerability in letting someone else wash your feet. Is it not wild that the disciples allowed Jesus to do this? Someone who was not a family member? Someone whom they've only been in relationship for maybe a few short years at best? 
is it not wild that they would let their rabbi wash their feet? Who in life has washed your feet? Perhaps tonight's gospel story speaks to the profound level of trust that these disciples have in their rabbi, which is perhaps exactly the point of all this, that that Jesus is trustworthy and faithful and does not hurt us and indeed endeavors to gather all of us in God's love, especially when we can't receive that love anywhere else. And we're not ever going to love perfectly. In fact, sometimes we try to love and care, and we end up doing more harm than good, and we try to repent and change when such things happen. But that's why we're gathered year after year, century after century around font and and, and table and and pulpit, places where where God's love finds us so that 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 compassion and care that, that flow from God's own self might continue to be woven into our lives again and again and again, like the finest thread count linens you've ever felt, soft, enveloping, wonderful. Because this love that comes from Christ, from God, this capital L love, it it does everything it can. God does everything God can to, to go into those hard places of our lives that need love, those places that we thought were settled without love, that we thought couldn't be changed, and God does something there. God's love nourishes us feeds us, washes us, changes us so that we might be sent out again with that love so deep in our bones that we can't help but reflect it in our lives. So keep watch for such love this weekend, dear church. At the table tonight, in front of the cross tomorrow and in this grand transformation of death into life from Holy Saturday into Easter Sunday and every day of resurrection that is beyond. Love is here and love is out there and it is everywhere. God's reach extends.
Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire in us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near. Especially today we pray for Lila, Spencer, Jill, Meredith, Jane, Lisa, Bill, Rick, Heather, the family and friends of Christine Meharg, as well, of all of, as well as all of those in need of comfort and healing, and all who we hold in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who sits at the table with us, grant the joy of your presence to people celebrating First Communion today, and to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities of faith in grace and courage. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who brings new life out of death, we pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of the saints, especially anyone who was affected in the Baltimore Bridge collapse. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Please rise. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, I in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son, I in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive us who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come, all are welcome here. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me. Like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a pot's hood. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And 
and you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in, a band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh, my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord give praise. All you of Jacob's line give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their, their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn. Sing to them, the Lord has acted. 